space with co-location. So for the last eight years of my life, I've understood what co-location and what closure and what phase out really mean for school communities. And there are two issues that really hit home for me. First, they're simply not efficient. There's a lot of money spent on the suits up front, as somebody has indicated before, and the suits at the back. There's a lot of money spent on security. There's a lot of money spent on people mics in here. There's a lot of money spent in places that could be going into classrooms. I taught for two years a reading class without books. What a phenomenal idea. Let's get some of this money that's being spent in this room into classrooms with books and some of that technology that we need. Let's stop spending it on administrative overhead to change numbers and email while kids on the children that we purport, purport to, to support. Secondly, the closures, phase out, co-location, they break the bonds that exist in the schools. They break those ties between teachers and students, parents, families, communities. That's painful. It sucks to teach a reading class without books. But it's really painful to look into the eyes of a student or to look into the eyes of a parent who traveled two hours to get to parent-teacher conferences and who wants to do best for their child, but because their neighborhood school is closed, can't. Stop co-location, stop closure, and stop phase-out. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Before we proceed, I just want to clarify. There are four schools on my campus. One is a brand new charter school, and one is on the closing list tonight. Not a coincidence. In my seven years teaching, I've noticed that there's a strange disconnect between what happens slowly in public schools and what happens quickly. Broken PA systems get fixed slowly. School construction happens slowly. Hiring for more guidance counselors and ESL teachers happens slowly. Money for training to help teachers learn restorative rather than punitive behavioral interventions comes through very slowly. But strangely, co-location happens quickly. Budget cuts happen quickly. The opening and expansion of new, of new charter schools inside of public spaces happens really quickly. And before they even have graduating classes. So if we're so worried about proof of effectiveness, why aren't we being slow and deliberate about fixing schools? End closures, co-locations, and phase-outs now, quickly. Hello, my name is Dana Levy. I'm a fifth grade CTP teacher at PSU 61 in Brooklyn, and I'm a member of the Rank and File Educators, the movement of Rank and File Educators. Each year that I've been teaching, I've seen the emphasis on testing increase and the freedom to teach children and see every child as an individual shrink. Each year the DOE tells us we need to do more, raises the standards higher, but provides nothing to help us help the families we serve. Then they threaten us. I know as a special education teacher that every student has a talent, every student has an entry point, and it's up to us as educators, as administrators, and you as the decision makers to find what works for every student and for every school. The parents in this school want the best for their children. Every parent wants the best for their children. If they are not here, it's because they're working. It's because they're new to this country. It's because they don't feel welcomed by the system that consistently ignores their input and laughs at their pleas for help for their children and their school. In the six years that I have watched as a teacher, I have seen the DOE wage an all-out war on public schools, on our students, and on our families. And they will continue to close failing schools because the schools will continue to fail. We cannot fix a system that has one guidance counselor for an entire school of children. We cannot fix a system where children are reduced to test scores. We cannot fix a system where children do not have art and music. The time has come for parents and teachers to come together and say no more to this, no more co-locations, no more charter schools that take public school money for some children who win the lottery. No more closing schools. I'm not done. My school is not under threat of being co-located or closed. My school is not being threatened with a 
charter school. I am a public school teacher and that's why I'm here. Because an injury to one is an injury to all of us. My name is Carla. I'm a third grade bilingual teacher in the Bronx. And I'm also a member of the Movement and Recompile Educators. So I'm going to read to you some a page from Dr. Seuss. Um, Hooray for Dipper Duper Day. Okay, so Mr. Lowell, the principal, appeared in Howl. Attention, girls and boys. He began to fuss and fidget, scratch and mutter, sneeze and cough. He shook his head so hard, we thought his eyebrows would come off. He wrung his hands, he cleared his throat, he shed a single tear, then sobbed. I have something to announce, and that is why I'm here. Our schools for miles and miles around must take a special test to see who's learning such and such to see which school's the best. If our school does not do well, then it will be torn down, and you will have to go to school and dream Flower Town. Not Flower Town, we shouted, and we shuddered at the name, for everyone in Flower Town does everything the same. It's miserable in Flower Town, they dress in just one style. They sing one song, they never dance, they march in single file. They do not have a playground, and they do not have a park. Their lunches have no taste at all, their dogs are scared to bark. We sat in shock and disbelief, oh no, we moaned, oh no. We were never, we were even more unhappy than unhappy Mr. Lowe. And this is exactly, our schools are becoming these places where less emphasis is being placed on critical thinking and creativity, but more emphasis is being placed on high stakes standardized testing. And communities are being destroyed, um, students, colleagues, parents, families are being literally physically separated when schools are being broken down. It's time to fix our schools by having smaller class sizes, experience administrators, experienced teachers, equitable funding, equitable academics support for all students. It's time to end the institutionalized racism within the DOE and racist policies that fail our students every single day. And to the public policies that reinforce English only ideologies and say you need to look at research in order to set up our bilingual students and our success. been to many hearings over the years and I've heard the, the stories and the just uh, explanations for why schools should not be closed and closed here. But we know that these people up here are sitting there and they're not listening. In a few years after George Bush stole the election in Florida, New York City parents were disenfranchised. And this is the result of disenfranchisement of the parents of New York City. This is what we have here. They are deaf, dumb, and blind to what is going on in school. Because we have no power. It doesn't matter that Bloomberg is going. I'm glad that he's going to go. But mayoral control remains in force. And until this law is repealed, and the rights of parents, until the parents are, uh, have the franchise and have control over our children's education, we will be going to these meetings again. We have to tell them that the, the mayoral candidates now that mayoral control must be ended. We have to control our children's education. I urge you to sign this petition and join with us to end mayoral control now. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Carmen Applewhite. I'm a New York City public school teacher. And I want to speak tonight in support of a moratorium on the co-location of schools in our public schools, as well as the increased closing of public schools in communities of color. I believe that a moratorium is necessary to investigate what exactly is happening in our schools. Because our schools are continually being shut down with the same policies being reinstituted by a new school, and our children are continuously failing. Education is a constitutional right of our children, it's also a human right. When the DOE institutes policies that only hurt children, what are they saying to the children? You want to know why the children are not succeeding in school? We want to know why our children are running to violence? We want to know why our children are going to gangs? Because the educational policies in our school are not set up to educate them appropriately so that they can be career ready, or so that they be interested in going to a college. 
Therefore, in order for a moratorium to be done in a fair manner, the United States Justice Department needs to investigate the Department of Education and their policies that are constantly instituted and recycled, which only hurt our children, particularly children with special needs. Why is it that you open charter schools and you open new schools, but you fail to have programs provided for children with special needs? Why is it that special needs children go to high school for four years with a useless and a wasteless high school diploma that they can't even get accepted into a college? I have parents calling me for assistance because this is happening to our special needs children in New York City. And the people that are sitting on the panel, you wouldn't do this to your children. You wouldn't have this done to your nieces or your nephews, your grandchildren, but it's okay to do the children of color. It's okay to treat our children unfairly, especially children that reside in economically disadvantaged neighborhoods and children that receive public, live in public housing and receive free school lunch. You think it's okay because you believe in your mind that the children are worthless and they're not going to amount to anything. So you sit here.